All right, guys, we are going to be reacting to China Bill's world's most magnificent undersea tunnel. Stun the United States engineers with impossible feet. Jump in. See, when millennia of geological change have carved the majesty of nature, human ambition once again turns its gaze to the blue unknown that covers 70% of the planet's surface. We come not to conquer, but to converse, not to take, but to connect. At this moment on the coast of China's Yellow Sea, an epic deep-sea dialogue in the history of human engineering is unfolding in an unprecedented way, in the silent world a hundred meters below the waves. This is Qingdao, a city born of the sea and thriving towards it. Beneath its glittering Jiaozhu Bay, a steel dragon is quietly tunneling through the darkness. It is the Jiaozhu Bay second subsea tunnel. Its goal is singular. In 2027, with a main line exceeding 15 kilometers, to surpass Norway's Rifolk Tunnel and become the longest subsea road tunnel on the planet. But this is far from a mere contest of length. Imagine sinking a building nearly 40 stories tall vertically into the seabed, its top still several meters from the surface. This is the operational environment at its deepest point of 115 meters. Here, Every square centimeter of rock endures a water pressure of over 11 kilograms, enough to crumple steel into scrap in an instant. The total volume of earth and rock expected to be excavated is enough to fill more than three great pyramids of Khufu. This is not just a challenge to technology, but a query to the very limits of human courage and wisdom. This is a story about suturing, a city, and reshaping the future of a Bay Area. To understand why this multi-billion dollar project is imperative, we need to look back at the M-O-D-E-R-N Chinese letter Chinese letter, M letter 1E-A-1-C-H-L letter 1E-A-1-C, a network of arteries and channels of Qingdao. Jiaozhu Bay, a natural harbor, was both Qingdao's cradle and once its constraint. It divided the city into the old urban core on the east coast and the vast hinterland on the west. In 2011, the opening of the Jiaozhu Bay Bridge and the first subsea tunnel was hailed as a feat of spatial magic. It shrank an hour-long ferry journey into a six-minute drive, completely unleashing the potential of the West Coast new area. As a national-level new area, the West Coast carries Qingdao's economic future. Its 2023 GDP surpassed 500 billion RMB, wow. comparable to that of a medium-sized provincial capital. However, success brought a new, sweet sorrow. The daily traffic flow of the first cross-sea passage is long saturated. A torrent of nearly 200,000 vehicles often plunges this main artery into congestion, oh. becoming a bottleneck restricting the city's ascent. More importantly, Qingdao's ambition is to become a world-class Bay-centric development metropolitan area, like the San Francisco Bay Area or the Tokyo Bay Area. This means that transportation must not just connect, but integrate. The passage must not just be convenient, but an all-weather, high-resilience lifeline. Thus, the construction of the second subsea tunnel transformed from an option into a necessity for the city's grand plan for the next hundred years. It carries the magnificent vision of transforming Jiaozhu Bay from a geographical dividing line into a central urban inner lake park. If the city's needs are the overture of the project, then the conditions at the bottom of Jiaozhu Bay, so complex they could be called a museum of geological disasters, are the symphony's cadenza and its most arduous challenge. What the engineers face is an ultimate exam paper written by the earth itself. The tunnel's path must traverse two- Yeah, the, the, China is doing a lot of tunnels, right? From one body, body of water to the other from one land to the other, just crossing the body of water. I think it's, they just want to have more traffic to some of those regions. They're just going through the coast. Two types of rock with diametrically opposed properties. On the west, Laotian system granite, as hard as steel, which ferociously wears down drill bits. On the east, soft, mud-like sedimentary rock, rich in water, where the slightest misstep could trigger collapses and water inrushes. However, the real nightmare is the 22 fault fracture zones lurking between these two rock types. These are scars left by hundreds of millions of years of crustal movement, where the rock has been crushed into tofu dregs and forms a fatal connection with the seawater above. Among them, the Kanku Fault, 
over 200 meters wide, lies like a slumbering behemoth in the tunnel's path. To cross it under 100 meters of sea, with immense water pressure, is a risk no less than performing microsurgery beneath a giant suspended reservoir. Faced with such a natural barrier, the traditional immersed tube method was rejected due to its impact on shipping lanes and the environment. Wow. The single TBM method was also abandoned because the geology was too variable and the risks too high. Too variable, too high, meaning what? Probably the terrain was way too soft and too weak. So I'm just wondering that's the case. If it is too weak or too soft, I think, yeah, that's correct. So there's some terrains that you cannot build because if there's too much water that cross or gets into that dirt, it just slides and just, it's a, it's, it's a pain. So. In the end, Chinese engineers chose a path no one had taken before, a combination of the drill and blast method and the TBM method, conducting a sophisticated and brilliant relay race deep beneath the seabed with two completely different techniques. That's crazy, man. In the hard granite, that's what unfolds is a flame almost. ballet armed to the teeth with digital technology. Engineers no longer rely on experience, but use intelligent drilling rigs to place hundreds of precisely calculated blast holes in the rock face. They are detonated by digital electronic detonators, mm. each with its own ID, with an ignition time accurate to the millisecond. Through these millisecond level delays, the energy of the explosion is tamed into a precise surgical knife, peeling off the rock according to a preset contour rather than destroying it crudely. When crossing the fault zones, they become geological detectives, using advanced drilling and radar detection to inject high-pressure cement grout into the fractured rock, suturing and reinforcing it to form a safe armor before advancing steadily. As the tunnel enters the soft strata of the eastern side, the protagonist changes to a super TBM with a diameter of over 15 meters and a total weight of nearly 4,000 tons. Hailed as a national treasure, this steel pangolin's front end is a giant cutter head full of tools, rotating to chew through the mud and rock That's ahead. That's crazy, man. Its middle section is like a mobile yeah. automated factory that, wow. while advancing, precisely assembles tons of concrete segments into rings to form the tunnel's permanent lining. Excavation and construction proceed in sync, turning the impossible into the possible. Wow. The most imaginative stroke of this project is the construction of two massive conversion wow, that's spaces. Another, that's another island, right? A man-made island. And a service tunnel in the center of the seabed. It is not just the junction of the two main tunnels, but the intelligent core of the ventilation system. Traditional extra-long tunnels often require the construction of unsightly ventilation towers in the sea. Here, the engineers cleverly use the central, non-traffic service tunnel as a dedicated fresh air channel, sending air from land-based fan towers and distributing it to the two main tunnels. This design not only solves a world-class ventilation problem, but also completely preserves the blue sea and sky of Jaya Aju Bay, mm -hmm. achieving a harmonious coexistence. So basically, they decided, you know what, let's just do this. Let's not do it on top, uh, on the water, right? Or in the water. Let's do it underneath the water. Let's just find, let's just find where's the dirt, or where's, where's the limit of the water, and let's just go underneath. Between engineering and nature. That's crazy, man. When the bell tolls for 2027, and the Jayaju Bay second subsea tunnel officially opens, the hundreds of thousands of people who pass through it daily will perhaps only marvel at a few minutes of smooth transit. They will not see the treacherous environment in which thousands of builders fought for thousands of days and nights for the sake of these few minutes of convenience. Wow. This is the ultimate form of top-tier engineering, born with the force of a thunderbolt, yet it integrates into life as silently as a gentle rain. Its greatness lies not in being looked up to, but in being forgot. People walking in it? Yeah, people walking inside the tunnel. I don't think that's a good idea. What about all the, uh, the, uh, mono, mo mono oxygen or I forgot the, the word of it. All that bad oxygen stuck, right? Uh, that's kind of dangerous. I would not be, I would not be walking in those areas, but clearly this is something that China has really uh, how can I say this? The Chinese have basically 
um optimize or enhance this type of technology just to create tunnels underneath the water a lot of countries are doing the same thing but not not at the same level as the chinese let me know what you guys think guys i would love to hear your guys opinions i'll see you next one